Sorry, Press Files. I did send you Chapter 6 yesterday. Obviously, you will be given a hard copy when you go back to school eventually, right? Today, I'm sending you the first two lessons because the first lesson is just the definition, so it almost doesn't even count. All right. So, if we look at Chapter 6 definitions. Okay, investment securities, this is the topic. Okay, so we're going to look at different types of investments. You will see we're doing two chapters on investments. The first one, chapter six, is on investment securities, and the second one is on, is on insurance. All right, now obviously businesses and individuals invest money to create wealth. The whole idea when people invest their money is that they want to see a return on their investment. You know, they're investing their money because they want their money to grow. All right. And through investing money and your money, having your money grow, that can create wealth, yeah? because it enables you to buy more stuff sometime in the future. So when we make investments, it is called passive income, yeah? that return of in, um, return of it on the investment that you receive. If, for example, you deposit your money in the bank and you earn interest, it is passive income. It's not because you're not doing anything to earn that income. You are not working and slaving away for that salary. It is income that you receive through basically doing nothing, yeah? a passive income. You're putting your money in the bank and it's just growing. Okay, so this means that the investor receives money, as I said, in the form of interest if you deposit money in a bank, or dividends, for example, when you buy shares, without having to physically work for it. Yeah? That's what I said. Passive income is when you receive money for basically doing nothing. You're not physically doing anything to receive that money. Right, the first definition that we are going to look at is investment. Okay, investment means that we are investing or saving money in order to yield better returns. In other words, we are putting our money away somewhere safe so that that money can grow. With an investment, we always expect our money to grow. That is what it says when it means to yield better returns, we want our money to grow. Okay, the Johannesburg Securities Exchange, or the JSE, okay, this is a formal market where they trade in shares, comprising of all the public companies that have been listed. All right, so any public company, remember only public companies will have their shares listed on the JSE, because private companies are not allowed to sell their shares to members of the public. Now, only public companies are listed on the JSE, and the JSE is the market that brings together the buyers and the sellers of shares. Right, so if you want to sell your shares, you're going to offer them for sale at the JSE, and if you would like to buy shares, you're going to work through a broker, and you're going to look at what is available for sale on the JSE. Okay, it's part of the capital market. Okay, what do we talk about when we talk about shares? Okay, when you are buying shares in a company, it gives you the opportunity to become a part owner of that company. All right, so if you buy shares in APSA, that means you are one of many owners and you own a part of APSA, a certain percentage of that business. Right, I referred earlier to the capital market. I said JSE is part of the capital market. So what do we mean when we talk about capital market or securities market? It is the market for securities or shares where companies and the government can lay, raise long-term funds. On the capital market, this is the place where long-term savings and borrowing is going to happen. All right, we also have a money market. The money market is for short-term funds. All right, so the minute that you see capital market, you are investing your money for a longer period of time. Okay, a short-term investment is when you make an investment for a period shorter than one year. All right, so in other words, if you put your money away, you invest your money, but you would like to withdraw your money within two days or 26 days or 32 days, if you invest your money for less than one year, then it is a short-term investment. Right, a long-term investment is when you make an investment for a period of longer than one year. So if you put your money in the bank and you could make a fixed deposit, for example, for five years, you're investing your money and you're only going to withdraw the money after five years, then that will be a long-term investment. Okay, we'll see when we work through this chapter, we're going to refer to fixed rate and inflation-linked rate. 
a fixed rate is when the rate of return stays the same for the period of time. So, for example, if you deposit your money in a fixed deposit account and you are going to earn a fixed rate, it means that the rate of interest that you are going to receive is going to stay the same for the full five years of your investment. Okay, when you make investments, you are either going to choose a fixed rate or a variable rate. Okay, with a fixed rate, as I said, it means your interest rate is not going to change. If it's a variable rate, when the interest rates change, obviously your rate is going to change as well. Right, what does it mean when we talk about accumulated? When you earn interest, obviously over an investment period, if you earn interest in the first year, and you earn interest in the second year, and you earn interest in the third year, when you add all the interest that you have earned over the total investment period, we are going to talk about your accumulated interest. Okay, so it's all the interest that you have earned over the entire period of your investment. Okay, we're going to also in this chapter talk about simple interest and compound interest, and there's some calculations involved there. So when we talk about simple interest, simple interest is calculated on the principal amount that you have invested. Okay, so every single year, if you have invested 5,000 Rand, in year one, you're going to earn your 10% interest on that 5,000 Rand. In year two, you're going to earn your interest, that 10% interest, on that 5,000 Rand. So with simple interest, you only are earning interest on the principal amount, the original amount that you have invested. With compound interest, it works differently. Okay, with compound interest, Literally, you are earning interest for every period on the original, the principal amount that you have invested, including all the interest accumulated during previous periods. So, for example, if you are in year one and you make your original investment, you are going to earn interest on your original investment. In year two, you are going to take your principal amount plus the interest that you have earned in year one and then you are going to earn your interest on the principal amount plus the interest that you have already earned in year one. Then we go to year three. You are going to earn interest on your principal amount plus the interest of the first year and the interest of the second year. All right. So every new period, every new year that your investment stays in for, you are going to earn interest on the interest of the previous years. Okay? Compound interest gives you a higher accumulated interest at the end of your investment period because you are not just earning interest on the principal amount, you are also earning interest on top of your interest. Right, well, what do we talk about when we talk about risk? Obviously, risk is one of the things that we're going to take into account when we decide how we want to invest our money. Risk refers to the chance that your invested amount may reduce in value or that you can lose your total amount invested due to unforeseen circumstances. All right, so the risk that you are taking, obviously, if you make an investment, we said that we want your investment to grow, but there's always a risk that your investment is not going to grow, the value of your money is actually going to decrease, or you make an investment and you lose your entire investment. Yeah, the, that is the risk that you are taking. All right, if we just look at the definition of investment, you know, what is an investment? Investment means that when we use our money to create future income. Okay? As I said, we make an investment because we want our investment to grow. We want that money to become more. All right, so we make an investment because we are going to receive a return on that investment. We're going to earn income from the investment that we made. Okay, for example... If a business spends money on buying an office building, where they buy a building for a million rand, two ways that they can make income from this building, obviously they can rent offices from the building. If there's an office building and there's 20 different offices in this building, we can have a different tenant in each of those offices and we will receive rent income. Okay, from these tenants, everybody that rents an office from us will pay us for the space that they are renting. So the building that we have bought is the investment. The rent that we receive is the income that our investment is giving us. 
Right, so money was spent to buy the offices, but at the same time, we are also going to earn money if we rent out these offices. We make an investment, and in return, we earn income. 